All right, hi all. Uh, again, Mr. Yeager here. Uh, what we're doing today is just uh, doing some uh, kinematic problems uh, together. So you can kind of again see how this, these can be done and hopefully then you can repeat them on your own. So uh, I got about, got about six, seven problems. Some are going to take longer than others. A speedboat increases its velocity from 20 to 30 meters per second in a distance of 200 meters. Find the acceleration of the boat and the time it takes for the boat to cover the 200 meters. All right, so as we were talking about, basically list what you have and what you need to look for. So we have your initial velocity. I'm going to use the AP uh, version of it with V naught. Again, that's just VI. His initial velocity is 20. Final velocity is 30 meters per second. And we have a distance of 200 meters. Okay. Uh, and I'm trying to solve for acceleration. Obviously missing time, duh, because I'm also solving for time in part V. All right. So which equation should I try to use? Okay. I would be using this equation, VF squared equals V naught squared plus 2A delta X. That would be my equation that I can use and solve for this right away, solving for A. So I plug everything on in. 30 squared equals 20 squared plus 2A times 200. Okay? This would be 900 equals 400 plus 400A. Okay? Okay, so solve for A. Subtract 400 to the other side. 500 equals 400A. Okay, 400A. And that would give you A equals 1.25 meters per second squared. All right. And that's it. So that's your acceleration. How about part B? For part B, what should I use? Okay, basically now that you have all four variables, you can use whatever equation you need to solve for T. I'm going to use the easiest one, VF equals V naught plus AT. So uh, again, you could technically try to use a different one. Maybe you're thinking that maybe I got A wrong, but I, I hopefully have confidence in your answer. But VF, you got 30 equals 20 plus, uh, what is it, 1.25 T. All right, 30 minus 20 divided by 1.25. This should come out to a nice eight seconds. Okay. So it takes eight seconds for this boat to cover the 200 meters if it's accelerating at 1.25 meters per second squared. Next, a car starts at rest and accelerates at 0.3 meters per second squared. What is the velocity after it has traveled 25 meters? So my initial velocity is zero meters per second. My acceleration is 0 0.3 meters per second squared. My, my uh, distance is 25 meters, okay? I am solving for final velocity. I don't have time. So again, what formula are we going to? We're going to the VF squared formula. So this would be, uh, we're looking for VF squared, equals zero squared plus two times 0.3 times 25. So I'm just doing the two times, two times 0.3 times 25. I get 15, 15 equals VF squared. I gotta take the square root. Final velocity for this would be 3.8, oh, it's round nicely, 3.9 meters per second. I'm gonna go and tell you sig figs. I think I probably, maybe I already said this already or not. We don't really worry about sig figs too much in this course, okay? Okay, 3.9 is correct, okay? Good. Another one. A racing car reaches a speed of 40 meters per second. At this instant, it begins a uniform deceleration. Now, I said we don't use the word deceleration, but it can show up in some of these problems. It just means that the acceleration is in the opposite direction of motion. Using a parachute and a braking system, it comes to rest five seconds later. Determine the deceleration of the car. So, and especially in AP, you're never going to see that. I don't think I use it that much, that much in physics, in regular physics either. So. We have an initial velocity of 40 meters per second. All right, it's going to come to rest. The final velocity is zero, and it's going to do that in a time of five seconds. All right, determine the deceleration of the car. In other words, the acceleration. So this would be V F equals V naught plus A T would be the formula to go to, because I have the other three variables missing A. So this would be zero equals 40 plus five A. Basically, just rearranging it. All right. Obviously.
obviously we're going to have a negative answer because we want the acceleration to be in the opposite direction of motion. It's going to be negative 8 meters per second squared. Okay. How far does it travel? Okay. Again, you can kind of decide what formula you want to go with. Um, I, I know a lot of people probably do the delta x equals v naught t plus 1 half at squared formula. For me, I, I would think that this formula, would, the vf squared formula, would be easier. That's just me, though. You don't have to. Okay? Delta x. There's also probably, you use the other formula as well, but again, that one's just not used that often. So this would be 0 squared equals 40 squared plus 2 times negative 8 times delta x. With that's what we found in the last problem. So this would be 40 squared, which then goes negative, so negative 1,600 equals negative 16 delta x, all right, divided by negative 16. Obviously, we're going to get a positive distance, 100 meters. We should still be moving forward. We're just slowing down, okay? So those are some examples there. All right, next. This is the other way that you will see problems being done, especially at the AP level. In regular, you're going to get some of these as well, and we're going to have to try to figure them out. So, two cars accelerate from rest. The first car speeds up with an acceleration A for time T. The second car speeds up with acceleration 2A for time T. How much greater will the velocity be for the second car than the first, and how much greater will the displacement of the second car be compared to the first? Okay? All right. These problems are going to become extremely common in the, at the AP level, okay? Um, you, we got to get used to figuring out how to do these. So these, these are what I call the relationship problems. You're trying to figure out how is the variable that's changing related to the one that you're trying to solve for, all right? So what we're doing here is basically saying in this problem for part A, you know that there's no initial velocity. It starts at rest. Okay? There is no initial velocity. You have an A. You have an acceleration. Okay? You have a t time T. You have a time T. Okay? And the first question is saying, what would the final velocity be? All right? What would the final velocity be? What would it be if you do the exact si same situation, but you double A, keep T the same, what would the new final velocity be, which I'm going to call VF prime, okay? How do we solve for these? What you do is just like how we solve regular math problems. So I'm going to tell you, one way you can do this, you can go ahead and pick out some numbers for everything, double it accordingly, and solve. That's fine. But we're going to have to really get used to doing those a lot faster. That's going to take some time up on the AP test, and it might be a little bit tougher to finish the test appropriately. So we need to be able to try to just see it. I want, I'm trying to show you how to see the problem just looking at the equation and getting an answer very quickly. Because this is something, again, we're going to do all year with every formula, and you're going to have to be prepared to use any of those formulas in that method. Okay? So what I do is I go, okay, well, what equation would this relate to? I have initial velocity, acceleration, time, and final velocity. It relates to this equation, Vf equals V0 plus At. That's the equation it's related to. Okay? What I then do, and this is where I get, I, I definitely lose some people, okay? One, they'll do this every time in these problems because it'll be too complicated otherwise. The V naught is zero, so I can eliminate that. So I'm left with this, VF is equal to AT. What I then tell everybody to do is eliminate any variables that don't change between situation one and situation two. All right, what variable stays constant? That would be the t. So what I do is I eliminate it. And now I'm left with an equation that's telling me that Vf equals A. Okay, now I'm gonna, it's not equals, but I'm gonna just, I, I write it this way. Vf is related to A. What that means is both of them are one-to-one -one ratio. If this is one, this is one. Okay, there's no coefficient in front of it. What we're going to do is we're going to add a coefficient. And whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. To keep this initial, this is the relationship. Vf is related to A. If it was related to 2A, I would say Vf is related to 2A. If it was, if it was Vf related to A squared, it would be Vf is related to A squared. If 
but this is just VF equals A. This is very common. They're going to do a lot of problems like this. So what we're saying is, okay, what happens between the two situations? If I double the velocity, what did I now add to this equation? I added a 2. So the thing is, I still want the equation to come out to this. It has to be one-to-one -one ratio. So if I add a 2 on the acceleration side, that means I must also double my final velocity. So what is this problem telling you? If you double your acceleration but keep time the same, the second situation velocity, the final velocity, will be double the first velocity. So that is your answer. The first, how much greater will velocity be for the second car? It'll be 2 times, okay, 2VF. Okay? It'll have two times the final velocity of the first car. Okay? So let's look at that for the next one. Okay? How much greater will the displacement of the second car be compared to the first? Okay? What would be the displacement? Okay? So now again, I need to find an equation that relates acceleration with displacement. And again, I still have the V naught is zero. And that would be this, delta x equals v naught t plus one half a t squared. The v naught t is going to be eliminated because v naught is zero. So I'm left with bf delta x equals one half a t squared. I then eliminate anything that remains the same from the first situation to the second situation. That would be the t. So and all this is gone. Okay, this is gone. Which starts at 12.15. Thank you. You're now left with delta x equals 1 half a. You eliminate any other constants in the formula. 1 half is a constant in the formula. It's going to, in each situation, you're going to have to multiply the equation by 1 half. So that's not going to affect your problem. So we eliminate that as well. So you eliminate any constants in the formula. Any of the numerical constants absolutely get eliminated. So we're going to have ones later that you might have 2 pi in it. Eliminate it. You might have another one that has 1 half in it. Eliminate it. Get rid of any additional constants. So look at that. For this equation, guess what? It's very similar. Now, this is not going to always be this way. All right, I'm just showing you this is actually a very common situation. This is showing you that delta, the displacement is also 1 to 1 ratio, 1 to 1 ratio with the acceleration. So that means... If I double my acceleration, what will my displacement do? It will double. So for this one, it's actually just very nicely double the final velocity and double the displacement that the second car goes. If it has two times the acceleration, it should go two times as far. All right, so let's try another one. Two cars have the same acceleration. Sorry, I'm something. Yep, okay. Two cars have the same acceleration A and start at rest. The first car travels delta X. Sorry, distance x and reaches velocity bx. How far does the second car have to travel to reach velocity 2vx? All right, so for this one, what's our constants? Okay, our constants in this one, this time we are not changing acceleration. That's going to be a constant. We also know v naught is zero. It starts at rest. All right. What am I trying to relate? I'm trying to relate basically final velocity. This Vx is quote unquote final velocity. The first car travels distance x and reaches velocity Vx. So I'm relating Vf to displacement. Vf related to displacement. So I need a formula that has both of those in it. Both of those in it. And doesn't have any other variables. Like I can't pick out a formula. I didn't say this. I can't pick out a formula with T because I don't know what T is doing. T is probably going to change. I mean, who knows? We don't know about it. It doesn't say that the time is the same for both of them. So I, we can't use time. So what formula has these variables involved with it? And it would be Vf squared equals V naught squared plus 2A delta X. Okay, 2A delta X. V naught squared is going to be zero. V naught is zero, so that's eliminated. Vf squared is now related to 2a delta x. It's actually equal to in this case, but we'll say we'll keep it related. Let's eliminate anything that remains the same from the first situation to the second situation. That would be the 2a. Acceleration doesn't change. 
and the 2 is obviously just there anyway, so they're going to be eliminated. So v, the final velocity squared is related to delta x. Now this one always tricks people, but again, you're going to see this happen in a lot of formulas. Once you kind of get the idea on this, it's just the same thing for almost all the formulas. It's the You'll see patterns grow out of all of these things over and over and over again. So it's not like, oh no, it's a new formula, I have to relearn everything. No, you're going to see these relationships. So you can see for this one, this is not a one-to-one -one relationship. This is a square-to-one relationship. Okay? Velocity is squ the square of the delta x. So what does that mean? Okay? So again, the first time you see this, it might be strange. What am I doing? I'm doubling my, delta, my final velocity. So I double my final velocity, but that's before I square it. The square, let me go back. Let me make this clear. This final velocity is technically in parentheses. It's a number that I then square. All right? So it's not going to be, you know, if my final velocity was 2, okay? Well, 2 squared is 4, okay? Well, now what if my final velocity is 4, okay? Well, then I would square that. VF squared would be 4 squared, which equals 16, okay? We have to do whatever, like, we, we can't square the number until we have the number. We cannot square it until we have it. So what we're saying here is we are doubling the VF. We are doubling it, okay? But I'm going to point out again, we start off with no coefficients. So it's a one-to-one -one coefficient. So what is going to be added to the VF? Well, if I have 2VF squared, this is equal to 4VF squared. So therefore, what did you add from the original formula down to what you did with the number? You now have a 4 in front of it. But I want the equation to be 1 to 1. 1 squared to delta x. 1 delta x. So if I added a 4 here, that means I'm going to actually quadruple the distance I get. So if I double my velocity, I actually quadruple how far I go because it's a squared relationship you see there. So the answer is you will go four times as far, four delta x. All right? I think I have a couple more still, since these I know are tricky. All right, I'm going to skip those. Determine the factor change. Card A uh, and B start at rest. If card A has double the acceleration as, as card B, how much faster we're called for car B to be traveling after time T. So this is one we already sort of did, but one more time. We're doing VF equals V naught plus AT. Okay? Uh, AT. Actually, we did this one. I'm just going to skip that one. This is the exact same thing as the first one we did. All right, let's look at this one, see if it's any different. Two planes travel with the same acceleration, the same initial velocity. If one plane wants to travel twice as far, how much more time does the plane have to travel? Okay, we haven't done that. So here's our last one. I don't have any more after this, I believe. Nope, this is the last one. All right, so they have the same acceleration, and they have the same initial velocity. Okay? If one plane wants to travel twice as far, how much more time does the plane have to travel? Okay? How much does it have to travel? I might change this up. Yeah, because we're going to get this. That, that's actually not a good problem. I just realized it. Let's say they both, uh, the two planes start at rest. The two planes start at rest. So if the two planes start at rest, V naught is equal to zero. Let's still solve the problem. This could be fine. How much more time does the plane have to travel? If it wants to go twice as far. Okay. So let's try this out. And the same thing for this. So that's a mistake. That's actually going to be very difficult to solve. Um, yeah, that's going to be difficult to solve. Okay, so how much more time does the plane have to travel? Okay, so here we go. So what we have here would be, sorry, think of that. We're going to use this formula, delta x equals v naught t plus one half a t squared. Okay. Eliminate everything that stays the same. So V naught, now I've made it zero. This is why I made it zero, because it would have made T change here and over here. That would have been really difficult to solve. All right, they're not going to give you a problem like that. So V naught T is zero. Uh, yep, V naught T is zero. 
and I'm going to get rid of the one half a because that all stays the same. So look at my relationship. Delta x is related to t squared. Related to t squared. All right. I want my plane to go twice as far. Twice as far. Again, no coefficients, meaning this is a one-to-one. -one. So whatever I add to the left side, I have to add to the other side, which then gets squared. Okay, this number will have to be, this is after the squaring of the number right there. Okay, so this is definitely, this is again a very common situation, but for, uh, initially it's tough to see. So what we're saying is I add the two delta x to this side, I want to add something in front of t and square it to get two in front of the t squared, if I put a two in front of the delta x. So it's, it's what am I adding, what am I changing the time, which then is squared, that will give me a two in front of it. And now I think a lot of you guys can see it. What I would do is basically I'm solving for the square root. Okay, I'm going for the square root. This would be square root of t. So what we're gonna say is, I would have to increase the time by root two, or sometimes it's written 1.4 times, okay? Because the idea is, if it's root 2, let me go ahead and do that one more time for you. I'm going to not go back to everything. 2 delta x equals t squared. If I, if I put, if I change the time by root 2, increase it root 2 times. And that's a pretty common way of saying it. If I square t, I get t squared. If I square the square root of 2, I get 2. So then you can see I now have that relationship. If I just cancel off the 2, I still see the delta x equals t squared relationship. All right? So I would have to increase it root 2 times. Okay? If the plane wants to go twice as fast, how much more time does the plane have to travel? Okay. This one's a lot easier. This one would just be vf equals v naught plus at. v naught is eliminated. a is eliminated because that stays the same. So vf is related to t. If I want to travel twice as fast, I double VF, so what am I going to do to T? I'm going to double it. Okay? And so that is how we handle some of these relationship problems. They're going to take some time. Some people get it right away. Others <laughs> take a while. Take a while to go through it. You've got to stick with it. You've got to try to keep doing problems, asking questions. All right? We can try to just keep showing it because this is an invaluable skill throughout the year. I am not saying it's going to happen just now. If you don't get it now, it's going to be tough later, it's going to be tough later, it's going to be tough later, all the way through the rest of AP physics. So be prepared, think about it, think what you need to do to be able to handle this type of problem. All right, the fail safe as always is to go back and just plug numbers in. That just takes the longer and you don't get any extra time on the test. All right, so that is it. Thank you.